Welcome to the decade of drum. Welcome to the 50s. The dancing, rollicking, rip roaring 50s. Drum isn't just a magazine, man. It is the people who made it. The oddballs, the screwballs, the ladies, man, the ladies. Henry Mumalo was Mr. Drum, a legend in his own time. Stanley Mujawadi, drum editor, remembers him like a brother. Henry Mumalo, pioneer investigative and crusading black journalism. When Henry first made the headlines, at least, uh, Casey and I were still students at college, but we tried at least to mold ourselves. In fact, we looked forward to the day that we would be journalists and of the stature of Henry. It was Henry who wormed his way into the corruption of the Bethel slave labor scandal and alerted the world to the horrors of the potato farms. Great guys like uh, Henry Ngumalo, Zik Mpatele, having to write at least with a flickering candlelight because very, very few the houses in the township that had electricity. Henry's old friend, Peter Abrams, a gem of a writer. It was Peter, a black in exile, who wrote the inside story of the Africaners' great trek to freedom. Those were crazy days. Drum was a world within a world, a nest of craziness inside a loony apartheid landscape, where even the editor, Anthony Samson, would occasionally lend a hand and where publisher Jim Bailey cast a cool and sardonic eye over, well, everything. They called this one Benny Benjo Gwigza of Mkwebi, to his friends, simply Gwigwi, clown and showman supreme. But also a master of the clarinet and alto sax, and the leader of the incomparable Harlem Swingsters. Name a stage, Gwigwi was on it playing high-brow and low-brow with equal zest. Available now on Video On Demand.